Recursion is one of the most confusing topics in computer science, but it's used everywhere in programming. So in today's video, I'm going to be simplifying recursion for you. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe for more videos where I simplify the web for you. Let's get started now. Now before we jump into any crazy code examples using recursion, we first need to understand what recursion is. And luckily the definition is very simple. The idea of recursion is a function that calls itself. That's it. All it has to do is call itself somewhere inside of the function. And immediately you're probably thinking that you just run into an infinite loop of a function calling itself over and over and over again until your computer dies or the world explodes. But the thing about recursion is that it works a lot like normal loops and that you have some kind of exit condition that jumps you out of the recursion so that the function stops calling itself over and over again. And the thing that makes recursion difficult to wrap your head around is you have to keep track of all the previous calls inside of the recursion stack when you're trying to plan out a recursive function. So what I'm going to do in this video is we're going to take a look at a few examples of normal non-recursive functions and then we're going to change them to be recursive functions so I can show you the difference between the two and we can also visualize what's going on. To start with, we're going to cover the most basic example, which is a function that counts down from the specified number you give it all the way down to zero. So let's just take a look at this basic function. All we have is a simple for loop that counts down from our number as long as we're greater than zero, it's going to subtract one each time we go through the loop, and it's just going to print out that number. And when we get to zero, it's just going to print out hooray. So let's call that function. We're just going to say countdown. And let's say that we give it three. It's going to count down, as you see, three, two, one, and then hooray. Let's just clear out our console. And let's work on implementing this as a recursive function. And now remember, in a recursive function, instead of using a loop like this, what we're going to do is we're going to call the same function over and over again. So let's create that function. We're just going to call it here countdown. And we're just going to call it countdown recursive so that we can separate it from our other function. And again, it's going to take a number n that we count down from. And the first thing we need to do in a recursive function is we need to have our clause that breaks us out of the recursive function. So in our example here, we are going through this loop as long as i is greater than zero, which means we are breaking out of this loop when i is less than or equal to zero. So what we need to do in here is we need to check if n is going to be less than or equal to zero then we want to break out of our recursive function. And to do that, we just call the return statement. But we need to actually call this console.log hooray inside of here as well, because this is what's going to happen at the very end of our recursive function, just like this happens at the end of our loop after we break out. So now we have a breakout statement, which is essentially the exact opposite of the while condition for our for loop. Then we can actually implement the recursive nature of our function. And the important thing is if we forget this, our function is just going to call itself over and over and over again until your browser, in this case Chrome, crashes, which is something we don't want. So now let's go down here. First thing we want to do is do our console.log where we print out n, because in this case we're printing out our number here. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to call our function again. But what do we pass into this function here? Well, up in this loop, you can see we're subtracting 1 from i, which means we're just constantly making our number n smaller by 1. So what we do in here is we're going to pass n minus 1 into our countdown function. And now we're just going to save that and see if this actually works. Let's call countdown recursive of 3, and you see it prints out 3, 2, 1, and then hooray. So this works exactly the same as our typical countdown function. But let's break it down a little bit further to figure out exactly how this function works. So we're going to break this down step by step. The first thing that happens is we call countdown recursive, and we call it with the number 3. And what this is going to do is it's going to go into our loop. It's going to say, is 3 less than 0? It's not. So we skip all of this. We're going to log out 3. And then after that, we're going to call countdown recursive with n minus 1, which in our case is 2. And this is done inside of countdown recursive. So we're going to say countdown recursive of 2. And again, same exact thing. Is n less than 0? No, it's not. OK, so we're going to call this countdown function again, countdown recursive, but this time with 1. And then again, same thing, it's not less than or equal to zero. So it's going to call again, countdown recursive. And this time it's going to call it with zero. And now immediately we come in here and we see, oh, it's less than or equal to zero, so we return. So here is what we do, we're returning out of this statement. We're now no longer in this countdown recursive zero. And now we move up back into countdown recursive one. And our countdown recursive one is already at the bottom of the function. So it just returns because essentially when you reach the bottom of your function, it's like having a return at the bottom just like this. So we leave countdown one, go back to countdown two, which starts right here. Again, it's at the very end of our function because it just finished calling this. So we go back to countdown three and again, it's at the bottom of the function. So it leaves it again. So all of these are returning themselves. So it would look kind of like this. We do our return and then we do our return 
and our return for all of these different functions that we're calling just like this. So that's kind of how this really basic recursive function works. But as you know, it's not really very useful to make this recursive. It's so much easier to do it in a loop, and it just makes more sense, easier to wrap your head around. So let's look at another example of a recursive function, one where we actually are taking an input and constantly growing our input inside of our recursive function, which is something that's very common in most recursive functions. So here's another example of a very common iterative approach that we would take to a solution to sum a range of numbers. So if we get the number 3 in here, we want to sum 3, 2, and 1 together, which will give us 6. So all we do is we initialize our total to be 0, we loop through all of these different numbers starting at our highest number, going all the way down till we get above 0, subtracting 1 each time, and adding it to our total, and then we return our total at the end. So let's test this function. We can call sum range of 3, and as you can see, we get 6, which is just 3 plus 2 plus 1. Now let's work on iterating this in a recursive function. So we just create a function down here, which is going to be called sum range, and this is going to be recursive. And inside of here, we're again going to take the n value which we're passing into our function. And as you can see, the very first thing that we're doing here is we're creating a total variable and setting it to zero. But since we're inside of a recursive function, any variable we set in this function is only available to that one single version of the recursive function and not to all of them. So we actually need to pass this total value to all of our different recursive functions. And by default, the first time we call this function, we want our total to be set to zero by default. So now that we have that out of the way, let's create our guard clause, which is going to exit us out of the function immediately. So again, we're going to say here, this is while i is greater than zero, which means we leave our loop when i is less than or equal to zero. So we can just say when n is less than or equal to zero, we want to exit out of our loop, and we want to return our current total. Otherwise, if we're not inside of that guard clause, what we want to do here is we want to return our total, which is going to be plus n. That's going to be our new total here. And we also need to call this function. So let's call sum range recursive. And we have our total version right here, which is going to be our total plus our current number. But what is our n going to be? Our n is just going to be n minus 1, which we're going to pass to our function here. And it's emulating here our looping of just subtracting 1 every single time. So now let's save that and call this function sum range recursive of 3. And you see we get 6. It's working as intended. But let's deep dive again into how this function is actually working. Let's go down here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call sum range recursive, which 3. And that's just going to essentially default our total to zero, even though we don't have to pass that in. And inside of here, we check, is our number three less than zero? It's not. So we're calling the exact same function again. And this time it's going to have two. And for the value for the total, it's just going to be zero plus three, which in our case is going to be three here. Now let's move on to the next iteration, which is going to be the exact same function again. But this time we're calling it with a number one. And our total here is going to be five because it's three plus two. Again, 1 is not less than or equal to 0, so we're calling this function another time. It's going to be our last time because we have now an n of 0, and our total here is going to be 6. So now we can go back up. We can say, okay, n is less than or equal to 0. So what we want to do is we want to return our total, which in our case is 6. So what this is going to do is it's going to return 6. And now we jump back to our sum range recursive with the 1 and 5, and it's right here at this point. We just executed the code here, so we're returning whatever this function returns. In our case, that's returning 6. So this function is going to return, whoops, return 6. And again, go back up when we call some recursive 2 and 3, it's going to return from this function, and it's going to return whatever that function returns, which in our case is again just going to be 6. And as you can imagine, the very last function we call here is going to do the same thing. It's calling this function, and whatever this returns is what this function is returning for us, which is 6. So as you can see, the functions that we've covered so far are just easier to do with a for loop, they make more sense that way, and that's perfectly normal. Recursion is not something you use all the time. But the next function that we're going to be covering is something that you almost always need to use recursion for because it makes your code so much easier to follow. So let's look at that now. So here we can see our function, which is called print children, and as you can see, there's no implementation for it because to do this with loops, as I said, is incredibly complex and almost impossible. And what we want to do with our function is we want to take this tree here and we just want to print all of the children all the way down as deeply nested as they go. So if we, for example, pass this tree, we have John, which has the children Jim and Zoe. And then we also want to print Zoe's children, which is going to be Kyle and Sophia. And to do this with a loop, as I said, is difficult. So let's look at how to do it with a recursive function, which is actually pretty straightforward. So let's create that function, which is just going to be print children recursive. And again, it's going to take whatever tree we want to pass into it. 
And the very first thing we need to do is we need to create our guard clause to exit us out of the loop. So we're gonna say if our tree, which in our case is t dot children, whoops, children dot length is equal to zero. So if our tree for some reason has absolutely no children in it, we just wanna return. And this is going to prevent us from here when we get to Jim or Kyle or Sophia, it's just going to exit out because we don't have any children to loop through. The next thing that we wanna do is actually loop through all the different children. So we can just say t.children dot for each. And for each child that we have inside of here, we actually want to run some code. And the first thing we wanna do is just print out that child. So we can just say child.name inside of here to print it out. And then we want to loop through all of that child's children. So we can say print children recursive and we can pass in that child. And that's all the code we need to write here. Let's just save this and execute it to make sure it works. We're gonna pass in that tree variable that we have. And as you can see, it prints out Jim, Zoe, Kyle, and Sophia. And as you can see down here, the children are Jim, Zoe, Kyle, and Sophia. So let's again deep dive into how this code actually works. Let's make a little bit of room for ourselves. And the first time that we call this, we're gonna be calling print children recursive. And this is going to be with John's children. So we're just gonna put in John here. And when we get into this, we see that John has two children. So we're actually gonna be calling this function twice. We're gonna be calling print children recursive with Jim, and we're gonna be calling it again print child recursive, whoops, recursive, and this time it's going to be with Zoe. So let's first look at how Jim's call gets executed. We can see that Jim has absolutely no children, so this is just going to return. It's not going to do anything inside of here, so we don't really have to worry about that branch too much. And now it's going to move on to this Zoe branch. And as you can see, Zoe has two children. So again, we're gonna call this function print children recursive two times. One time it's going to be called with Kyle and Kyle's children, and the next time it's going to be called here with Sophia. There we go. And both of these don't have any children. So again, they're just going to return and they're going to return. And now Zoe is going to return after going through all of her different children. And then John is lastly going to return when he goes through all of his different children, just like that. And now let's even look a little bit deeper into this. So as we can see, we call this with John, we go through here, he has children, so we don't actually execute this. So we loop through each one of his children, print their name and call it. So the first time we come through here, we call this on Jim. So we completely ignore all of this code down here with Zoe. Right now, we just called this with Jim and we go through Jim's children. So we see that Jim doesn't have any children. So we exit immediately. And then we can move on to our next function, which is the one with Zoe. So we come in here, we see that Zoe does have children. So we loop through each one of them. And the first thing we do is go through the first child, which is Kyle. And we jump into this again and return because it doesn't have any children and so on as we go through Sophia and the rest of them eggs out. And as you could see, if we close this off, save it and recall that function of print children recursive with our tree, you can see that that is working properly. And it's something that, as I mentioned, is very difficult to do iteratively with a normal loop because you don't know how deeply nested these children could be. They could be nested two levels deep like this, or they could be nested a hundred levels deep. So writing that with an iterative loop is just much more difficult than this simple code here to print it out recursively. And that's the real benefit of recursive functions over iterative functions. And that's all there is to recursive functions. Make sure to check out my other videos linked over here for more simplified explanations of web development. Also, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video and want more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.